And many of you this year um, really wanted to know who Lewis Fox was before you came for your interviews, and I really uh, applaud that. You were trying to do some research, and apparently there's not that much on the web, but um, uh, annually at this gathering, I have given a, um, a history of, we, of Lewis Fox because he was a remarkable man. And as, as um, uh, Art Carito said, um, it is because of his generosity that we have had uh, close to 900, I haven't, I've lost track of the exact number, 900 young people that have re received, almost 900, who have received Fox Scholars. <laughs> Lewis Fox died 31 years ago in 1976 before most of you were born. You did not know him, but he has and will continue to have a real influence on your lives. Lewis was a Hartford man. In 1907, at the age of two, his family moved to the new home that they had built on the corner of Fern and Prospect Street. That house still stands. Lewis lived in that house for the rest of, the li of his life. He was an only child, and his mother died when he was only six years old, and his father never remarried. When Lewis was living, first living in that house, um, trolley tracks ran past the house down Prospect Street, and across the street were meadows with cows grazing. If any of you know that corner today, it looks very different. Two of his friends from that childhood days were Thomas Gill and John Case, and both of them served as trustees in the early years of the foundation. As today, the neighborhood elementary school was Noah Webster, so renowned that children from neighboring West Hartford streets were allowed to attend for a small fee. While at Noah Webster, Lewis was stricken with infantile paralysis, which left him with a serious speech defect. His family was wealthy and took him to the best doctors in Boston and New York, but they had no positive uh, results in helping him. He moved on to Hartford High, and one of his teach English teachers, who was trained as a speech therapist, offered to help him. For two years, Lewis spent long hours in exercise and therapy with Miss Grace Garvin, after school sessions, and then long hours of practice at home. The experience was difficult, often discouraging, but a supreme disciplining experience for Lewis Fox. His long hours of practice paid off. He learned to speak easily and often at public gatherings with no trace of a handicap. Those of you at Bulkley know of the Grace Garvin Citizenship Prize established by Mr. Fox in memory of Miss Garvin, who ended her teaching career at Bulkley. Lewis left Hartford to attend Princeton University and then law school at the University of New York. He returned to Hartford to practice law, but much of his life was devoted to the young people of Hartford. He never married. Though he was a devout Jew, he felt it important to give his life of service to all young people, no matter what their belief. And he was first elected to the Hartford Board of Education in 1937. Oh my, served in that position for 37 years, excuse me, I had, <laughs> I had forgotten it was that long. <laughs> 37 years, my goodness. Ah. The evening before he died, he had attended what was to be his last board meeting. Lewis was a man of quiet courage. This courage was demonstrated in 1952. The Board of Education was asked to make a um, controversial decision. The, de the decision was surrounding the controversy of a Paul Robeson concert at Weaver High School. Robeson, as you all, many of you um, know much about Paul Robeson today. He was an outstanding singer and actor, but his support of the Soviet Union during the McCarthy era, era made him an outcast in his own country. The teachers' union opposed his visit to Weaver. 
the Hartford Current editorialized against him. 197 Weaver students signed a petition opposing his appearance at Weaver. The final decision was to be made by the Board of Education, led at, chaired at that time by Lewis Fox. As the board voted six to three to allow the concert to be held, Lewis stated, and I quote, freedom of speech and freedom of assembly are two of the most cherished rights granted by the American Constitution. Those rights must be granted to those whose views we loathe as well as to those whose views we support. Lewis lived the ideals of leadership and character. We now ask Fox scholars to demonstrate. When his father died in 1936, Lewis established the Scholarship Foundation in memory of his father, Jacob Fox. And then upon his own death, Lewis left most of his estate, approximately $1.5 million, to the Scholarship Foundation. The annual number of scholarships has increased from four or five each year. And it also um, includes women, which it did not include until 1979. And the total, this today, we have 19 scholars who are being or, um, honored, and the total number is, I'm not quite sure. We're, we're around 900. We're about 900. I, we, I got to really start adding up because I, but it's amazing what a mighty fellowship you have joined. And we say that once a Fox scholar, always a Fox scholar. So this is certainly not the last time we are going to be seeing you, we know. You may have found the selection process grueling this year, but when Lewis was alive, there were a series of individual interviews for each candidate, which were even more stressful. When I was guidance chairperson at Weaver High School, I often received calls from Lewis about the applicants before and after their acceptance. He established a very personal relationship with each scholar and was always available for help and consultation. And I hope that each one of you with your trustee assignment will feel that important um, tie. Lewis was an optimist. His confidence and high expectations for his students was motivation in itself. He understand, his understanding and trust gave students the strength to excel. We are here this morning to present each of you with a scholarship, but in addition, and just as important, you become a member of the Fox Foundation. Membership with, brings with it a responsibility a responsibility to uphold the ideals of the foundation, scholastic achievement, character, leadership, and a spirit of reverence. Membership assumes participation, participation in the annual gatherings of the foundation, volunteering in the, ac in the activities of the foundation and in your community. Um, we will be asking you to um, take part in a career day this year going to be at Weaver High School in November. It's just one of the activities that the foundation has. In addition, you should arrange to send a copy of your grade report to your trustee at the end of each academic year. We do not require a certain grade point average for you to continue your scholarship but we do feel it's important for, your trust, for the trustees to be aware of your progress. Keep in touch with your trustee. We can provide you with more assistance than just access to your scholarship. We, as trustees and earlier scholars, share the faith that Lewis Fox would feel if he were here today, that each of you is going to accomplish something extremely worthwhile in life and that you will measure up to the ideals of the foundation which were the basis for your selection as a Fox Scholar. Today I welcome you into the Fox Foundation family.